Hey folks, welcome to another custom lesson. This one is for Ludo Tech. Ludo Tech specifically requested fists and split staff. I could go through the other weapons, but that would just be too much for this. So I'm just going to stick to fists and split staff. Now the soul cores that were requested were as follows. On Baku, there was to be Epon, which I put down here, Aberrant Soldier, and then an AoE ability, so I picked Seto Taisho. This one's actually quite a lot of fun. And let me explain the reasoning behind why I picked Seto Taisho, and as well as some things you may not know about it. So you'll see the Soul Core rank at first of 30, and that's just because I farmed Benkei a ton in the depths just for like getting Scrolls of the Damned. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, but I happened to find one with an Anima Charge bonus, Umrit the Gauge AA, at base rank. This is B. Um, normally you might see C plus versions, so the better version is just rank. It starts at rank B. So I was like, hey, I happen to get one with this, so I'll just max out the soul core rank. But any other anima bonus, anima charge bonus, whatever you want will work well. Now this soul core, and specifically the yokai ability are quite interesting. This says that it summons a Seto Taisho to stand imposingly before you, protecting you from incoming bullets or arrows. And so even with the video, um, it's like, what about the bullets? Where are the arrows? And it doesn't really even show you. But I'll, I'm will i here to, to show you that it actually functions more than just dealing with projectiles. It can straight up body block. And in addition, it can block certain attacks. And I was surprised at what it can block as well. So definitely not something to underestimate, but I'll talk about more about that a bit later. So Abrant and Ipon were next on the list. I do have a super great anim uh, Aberrant Soldier Soul Core. I would recommend you get this to rank 30, but I wanted to test out Soul Cores at lower ranks. So the most important thing for me here is the Yokai Ability Key Pulse. I happen to have Anima, that's great. But for sure, this is the one Soul Core to get to rank 30 because you want to boost this efficient Yokai Abilities. And even more importantly, turn Anima Bonus Timely Guard into a great Anima Generator. I think at max rank, it's like 2.6. And so it makes a big difference. So definitely of all the soul cores that I'm going to go through today, get this up to rank 30 as soon as you can. Um, this ability, for those of you who don't know, is actually faster than it suggested. So while the actual animation isn't necessarily faster than what I'm uh, going to queue uh, in a bit, the thing is, oh, oops, I'm a little finger messed up. In any case, the recovery time is a lot shorter than you'd expect. So I'll showcase that and how you can take advantage of input buffering to really get the most bang out of your buck. Last but not least is Epon. I did not go with the Epon I've used in the past. I just picked one that had a decent anima bonus this time. So get whatever anima bonus you'd like. Um, the attunement cost is just because it's there. I don't need it. As you can see with Baku, I have a ton of extra attunement. So for sure, if you wanted to substitute this out for more heavy attunement cores, Absolutely, please do because Baku is really good at being able to use all sorts of soul cores that have a lot of high attunement cost. Now with Baku, you have a lot of anima charge, so it's not as important per se to get anima bonuses, but it can only help. And then because this is the de facto corruption core, you got melee damage versus corrupted enemy, corrupted accumulation, it definitely suits a corrupted weapon style of play, but you don't have to do that. Now let's talk about Yumehame. So with Yumehame, again, this was a specific request. I was tasked with putting Onibi, Ongyoki, and Nurakabe. So Nurakabe, I just literally picked one that had Yokai ability keep pulse. That's it. I didn't care about this anima charge critical at all. Um, I just turned into a phantom and voila, got this. Nurakabe is rather interesting, even though the cost says it's two. As you can see here, you can do up to three different slams. Each of those costs two. So in total, if you're going for the super play mode, as you can see here, it costs six anima and it is super awesome a great core and it definitely earns the smashing reputation it has pun totally intended now another quick cancel core that we're going to have is a maelstrom only b i just picked whichever one i felt like so i found one with cool status effects or special effects on here and that was it when it comes to soul core rank, I would say this is the second one you want to boost to rank 30 simply because getting anima bonus elemental attack is great. Anytime we can more rapidly generate anima, great. 
This is also, like Aberrant Soldier, a very quick cancel core. In fact, it's probably even faster. And it can help you seamlessly transition from melee weapon play to more melee weapon play with very little downtime. And so it's it's favored for that reason. And then I just, element-wise, again, I just picked water because do more damage, why not, right? You can also pick lightning if you want to slow targets down, but I figured with Yumehame being a lightning spirit, it wasn't really that necessary. So, yeah, that's fine. And then... Last but not least was Ongyoki. I picked what I thought would be one of the best Ongyokis I had. This one was very fortunate to roll Anima Bonus Corrupted Enemy. You can of course substitute this with whatever, but I figured, hey, with Ongyoki, one of its biggest things that it can do is that it can inflict Corrupted upon an enemy. So hey, let's turn that into an additional Anima Bonus. But of course, you can get whatever Anima Bonuses, or you don't even have to use it if you really don't want to, because if you're dealing with multiple enemies and you're fighting many enemies, you're going to get a lot of gold, in which anima bonus gold earned actually makes a significant impact. It's like two or three anima, and it can be pretty awesome. Um, other things with Yumehame include melee key damage, which is really nice. 20% at all times is nothing to scoff at. Uh, if you're using purity weapons, this makes a huge difference. If you're even using corrupted weapons, it makes a massive difference too. That can be pretty nice. The extended yokai shift is pretty cool, so but in all honesty, it's not something you need to worry about. Faster key recovery, Amrito absorption is nice. I think the buff percent it increases like 20%, so you can probably get better sources of key recovery. But if you don't want to use those other sources, then hey, at least you got it here. This soul core, even though it's a very all-purpose generic in terms of its bonuses, has a pretty low entombment cost, so I had to be a little mindful of that. But as you can see, it's not too much to worry about. One last thing, the pairing of Yumehame and Baku is unique in that you will also get max yokai ability key damage plus 3%. This is one of the very few sources in the entire game that provides you a bonus to your max yokai ability key damage, which can make a tremendous difference. Uh, if you didn't know, certain pairing of Guardian Spirits, usually if it's lore based, they have some unique properties to them. So just something for you to know. But the other sources of max yokai, max yokai ability key damage. Oh my god, my mouth sucks right now. That sounded dirty. <laughs> Another source is soul atrophy, which you can get in the skill tree. Yokai abilities reduce an enemy's key by 6% more than normal. Um, there is a clan in which you can boost the max yokai ability key damage. I think it's like Hachisuka clan or something. And then you can get max yokai ability key on your soul core. So this is definitely a premium stat, which makes things all the better. So before I continue on, let's get my controller back up and let's showcase a couple of things that you can do. Now, one of the first things I definitely want to instill within you is to use your brute counter as an additional attack. It makes such a huge difference when you pair it with soul cores. So bear that in mind. It makes it's it's awesome. So use it as an extra attack because you are gonna get a lot of anima courtesy of things like Aberrant Soldier, which turn timely guards into anima generation, and it can be pretty rad. So make sure you start doing that. Now let me talk about the downtimes or recovery times of each of these soul cores, just so you're aware. And I'm gonna base this by the soonest my character blocks. So I'm gonna be holding block during the entire animation of each soul core, just so that you're aware of how long. It is before you can freely act. So you see there's a appreciable amount of time when it comes to Seto Taisho. And so you can start attacking from there on out. But one thing I want you to be aware of when it comes to Seto Taisho is that you cannot use another soul core for some time. So you have to wait to use Yokai abilities or Yokai shift for a while. You can do a burst counter, but if you want to use other yokai abilities, you're going to have to wait until it finally disappears. So bear that in mind. This is different from, say, scores like Aberrant Soldier. You can block pretty darn quickly. And so this can be really fast. So if you really want to spam that, go for it. Keep on is kind of the same way, too. Which is why it's a fan favorite, because it's so seamless. So continuing on, let me start talking about Ipon once again. Ipon can serve multiple purposes. It's really fast and it can stagger opponents, but it also has pretty instant airtime. So you can use it to dodge all sorts of attacks and it can be really powerful for that reason. So 
Definitely use it as a multi-purpose soul core. It can avoid attacks, dodge them. You can avoid grabs as well. Um, Aberrant Soldier will be your quick cancel core, which you can use in a pinch. And then Seto Taisho is now what I'm going to cover. Seto Taisho is, in all honesty, basically just like somebody is blocking for you. So I'm actually going to wait for the Yoki Super Burst attack to show you the value of Seto Taisho. Blocked. You may have heard the block sound effect there too. It's also really good for a body block too. I'm sure you heard the block there. So if you just need something to block, then make sure you use it. Of course, don't walk into AoEs, but it's good as a body blocker. So use it for that. You can still attack through it, which can be really cool. And it does have ranged AoE key damage. So if you're dealing with multiple enemies at a time, you just want to deplete their key, by all means, use Seto Taisho. It's not necessarily that heavy in terms of key damage, but it's pretty modest. And being able to interrupt many targets is awesome. So definitely give it a shot. I've been enjoying it quite a lot. When it comes to Aberrant, it's really fast, as I've mentioned. So if you really want to just keep spamming it, you can. And then last but not least, let me showcase Ipon. Ipon is your de facto stagger core. Come on, do a grab, please. Come on. Come on, buddy. Stagger. Stagger. So yeah, many players like Ipon as well because it's really fast. But pair these up with Brute and it feels extra spicy. So there you have it. That's what I'd recommend with those soul cores. Now let's get on to the Phantom Soul Cores. Nurukabe, Maelstrom Oni B, and Ongyoki. So Nurukabe, as I've mentioned, is three tiered. You can do tier one, one slam, tier two, two slams by basically activating your Kai ability twice, and then one, two, oh. One, two, three. On humans, you can usually flatten them. And then I didn't mean to pop Ongyoki, but Ongyoki is your stealth core. So targets usually just leave. I don't know why he didn't leave, but yeah, it's stealth. Targets will ignore you, and you can come back out for corruption. Oh, now he left. So they're definitely really valuable. So let me show you Oni B real quick. It can feel really good to sequence through attacks and feel like. You're almost, I don't know, cheating, even though you're not. So yeah, there's your quick cancel core business. Now I want to showcase Yokai Shift and how they work together. All right, let's deplete some key. Let's just get some slammy, slammy, slam. Okay, so here's some combinations. Let's pop Yokai Shift, and then let's activate. Do some cool things. Pop Confusion. If it was close, it'd be nice, but I guess not. Because they're slowed and you've got them confused, you can usually destroy them. And then if you want to apply the other elements, well, now you've got access to three total elements, which can be ridiculous. So other things you can do with Oni B, start attacking. Throw out Oni B, you get the quick charge. And it's pretty cool. Pretty neat, right? Now let's showcase Brute stuff. I find Brute stuff to be quite fun with this setup too. Okie dokie. Alright, what do we got? Well, I can't go wrong with E-Bone, right? Alright, let's pop Yokai Shift. And then Baku's Guardian Spirit attack is a little on the interesting side. Usually targets will take longer to get paralyzed but as you can see there assuming they don't get paralyzed instantly you've got a lot of power play so as a general rule of thumb I'll use guardian spirit and then I'll use a yokai ability to cancel so it's pretty awesome but again be mindful of the animation downtime for Seto Taisho don't forget to use that burst attack as an extra attack for this setup. It can be dirty.
Look at this business. And see ya. So yeah, it's it's very powerful. You have a lot of melee pressure play with Baku. And you've got the defensive shield business with Seto Taisho, so it can be a lot of fun. But now let's start adding in weapon play on top of this recipe. So fists, there's a lot of things you can do naturally to humans courtesy with that. But it gets compounded by the fact that we're using Maelstrom Oni B. So if you're having struggles with key, which I can understand many of you might, then you can always use Oni B to help you deal with that. And it'll just feel like you're constantly pressuring your opponent with melee attacks, even though you technically have used a soul core, so it can feel extra exquisite. Now when it comes to other things you can do involving this setup, you can always use Death Counter to help you set up Nurikabe and flatten the target. And you can always use Oni B to quick cancel, mix in other abilities. And it can feel pretty dirty that way. So you'll be playing very quickly with this overall setup and whenever you need to escape, you can always use Ongyoki. So bear that in mind. So here's maybe another idea that I think would be cool. Let's do fill the void. Ah, I made you turn around. Kinda dirty, isn't it? And there's your super bonkers pressure play. With fist, this can get even dirtier, and there's so many different possibilities to punish humans for that. Now, when it comes to brute play with these weapons, well, you've got a ton of key damage courtesy of all of these abilities. And don't forget, you have things like Opportunist to assist. And it can be pretty rad. And of course, you can mix in Seto Taisho to help you push a target away. And it can be pretty awesome. So definitely use the fact that Seto Taisho has spacing to help you control things even further. You got many, many pressure plays. It's pretty wild. And of course, the one thing I did not really utilize well enough was the Brute attack just to keep kicking some butt. So let's just try some Brute pressure. Pretty neat. Got that extra attack and look at that. Helps me get into an Azuna drop. So definitely not something to be underestimated with. Let me show you some other quick things that you can do. Alright, let's set up Deft Counter into Roar Power. That Taisho. Oh, I was hoping I would have gotten the key depletion from Heron Kick. <laughs> They're dead before I can do much. But yeah, there's a lot of creativity that you can mix into play when you know, hey, I'm basically safe with Seto Taisho. And it can be pretty fun. It'll block an attack for me. And then, alright, let's just do a quick little demonstration. Kick a Yoki's butt with everything that I can. And we'll go from there. Come on, buddy. Oh, you... Okay. Alright, what you got? I don't think you got anything, dude. Oh, you're dead. Well, we'll bring you back up and assume you have three times the amount of life. Come on, let's do it again. What you got? Oh, I'm sorry. You ain't got nothing. Let's switch. Oh, whatever. Don't matter. Activate double elements. Let's make that triple element. Oh, it don't matter. Who cares? Got access to triple elements. Actually, technically, I got access to four elements. So you'll be able to kick a lot of butt with this alone. And then let me just do one more time with just the weapon base play. And soul cores without the use of Yokai Shift. Pretty awesome. Ooh. What you got, man? You ain't got squat. 
<laughs> Couldn't even showcase split staff. Let's showcase split staff. All right, let's go. Hey, what's good? <laughs> There's a lot you can do. There's a lot of power you have access to, and I think the surprise for me is just the fact that I kind of have a lot of elemental coverage, so this can definitely be pretty awesome. In any case, I think I've talked enough. It's better to just show than rather just tell you how awesome this is. I will see you guys in a bit. Time for the gameplay showcase. This scroll involves Yasha at the very beginning. I forget the exact contents of Scroll the Damned, but I'm sure I'll have that in the description. Uh, one cool thing you can do is with Opportunist, you can sequence, of course, all sorts of attacks afterwards, as you saw with the burst counter, which is handy. But for the most part, the game plan is going to be to try to take out all of the additional enemies that you're going to see. Uh, one mistake that I do make here is that I don't use Seto Taisho Soulcor, and you'll see this in a, in a few moments. I don't use it that well here. So all of the benefits I get from it are really just doing some ranged key damage to Yasha, and I'm not able to place it in a way that can take advantage of them. And so now I'm running a little low on anima, and these enemies are annoying, so it would have been better if I had use Seto Taisho at that moment as opposed to a little sooner. So just some food for thought. Next up is Ubame. Now with Ubame, one of the biggest concerns is going to be the fact that she dodges all over the place and she has some pretty annoying key damage abilities courtesy of her screen. So it's going to be very important for me to pay attention to various attacks and her counterattacks. And as you can see, I was making an error in terms of my judgment, so Ongyoki allowed me to catch a brief, I guess, second breath, if you want to call it that, or second wind. It gave me a second chance, rather. If you didn't know, Phantom Burst Attack can count, sorry, Phantom Burst Counter can counter any attack from any direction. So if they're gonna hit you, pop it and you'll be good to go. But anyway, back to the main game plan. Kill these fodder enemies so I can deal with Yasha, who is quite a threat. Opportunist really does help me stay in place with the fists, so it's quite valuable. And now again, I just want that little skeleton down so I can get onto Yasha, who is a lot trickier than the other opponents. Good ol' Opportunist timing. She dodges a lot, so I'm using a lot of gap closers. If she has long animation times, I take advantage of things like roar power. It's the E-Bones for a nice solid punish. Here I kind of messed up. Uh, Yasha isn't really going to be that much trouble, but I shouldn't have used Serpent Sweep as long as I had. But check this out, Opportunist Burst Counter, oh that feels so nice. And now I'm trying to go for a Beyond Infinity finish, but there's a lot of close range pressure that I can have. And what's nice is with the Soul Cores, there's a lot of different opportunities I can have provided my gameplay plan is solid, which is stay in their face and do the things and kill them. But Giant Toad is now the big battle. And as you can see, I'm ignoring a lot of the battle with Ongyoki. Wasn't the best timed, but and I managed to survive. So what's going on next? Avoiding the attacks, going back in with Heron Kick, and I'm trying to rapidly deplete key. There's a cool little Radiant Moon, E-Phone right after, changing ways. It's just non-stop attacks and making sure I can always stay on the offensive. I believe I get very close to depleting key, but not quite. And so now my objective is simply to deplete the key. I'm getting very close to it now because I used a burst attack. And then let's go into Brute Yokai Shift. We're gonna do a lot of pressure plays right here. So summon the Guardian Spirit, I use Epone, and Paralysis doesn't really build up that quickly because this is a giant toad who inflicts Paralysis himself. So it's a little tricky. Set out Taisho for that range. AoE key damage, now I'm gonna transition into Phantom. A lot of stuff I can do here, since the target is already corrupted, I can inflict lightning. Oh, I forgot, Dark Realm transition. Oh, never mind, confusion's back up. Let's get that super sweet Norokabe, super damage, and then I decide to get another brute Yokai Shift transformation, but my Yokai Shift just now ran out, and that was a lot of damage that I was able to output, and I haven't really depended upon my weapons as of yet. Ongyoki yet again to avoid a lot of the attacks that Giant Toad has. I need to be a little conscious of my health, but that's really not to worry once I get Giant Toad out of key. So let's see what I decide to go with here. Looks like I decided to go for it. You know what? Let's just deplete all that max key and make sure that curse is gone. Same plan, same game plan. Let's go in. Let's do a lot of punches. All right, we keep following him. All right, he's doing super spin. It was too bad I wasn't using fists. I could have opportunist that. I right, one hit, two hit. 
three hits, and then here's the jump. Yep, I anticipate that, and now I believe I go for a Beyond Infinity. Get a lot of damage. I wish I had done this a little sooner so I could have gotten, you'll see, the grapple off, which I didn't. You set up Taisho to defeat some key. And then I believe I go for Beyond Infinity again, and then I actually whiffed the last hit, which kind of upset me, like the timing. And so I was a little tilted, so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to use Roar Power You right in the sack. So, now you're dead. <laughs> it still worked. Maybe it didn't work out as well as I'd hoped, but yeah, he's still dead. In any case, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys next time. Do a backflip. Thank you.